Hello there folks, um, my name's Emma Gregory and I'm in my back kitchen which also doubles as a studio uh, and um, I'm here today to talk about expanded print, my relationship to it and what I already think it is um, but also how I'd like to get you engaged with it. Um, so I've got with me a brain dump kind of mind map thing uh, my computer, some copies of printmaking today and a book um, and some examples of expanded print. So let's start with what we think print is. Well, we know what we think print is. Um, and in fact, um, uh, Richard Noyce in this article over here has um, defined it for us. So historically, the medium has been linked to the preparation of a matrix from which to produce an addition of prints. He goes on to talk about Priscilla Romero's work um, in relation to that definition um, as examples of expanded print. So we'll come back to that, but let's just look at print per se for a moment. So we've got the idea of a matrix and the idea that it's framed or on a wall, ergo 2D. Um, the matrix part of it uh, we hang on to. Um, but the framed and on a wall bit, we're going to just cross through for the moment. The matrix allows us to think in repeats and layers, collections, cyclical thinking, iterative thinking, and perhaps incorporate text, as does any 2D print. But um, this is what we want to hang on to. But um, imagine that we're going to go 3D. Um, and there are ways of doing this, and I've tried to, well, I've brainstormed a few of them. Um, you could employ a 3D printer and print something to your own CAD design, or you could cast, or you could make from a mould, um, or, or make a mould. And, and that relates very closely to ceramics, often next door to print in an art school. And uh, I just wanted to show you uh, Daksha Patel's Takuhon work, which is in one of the recent printmaking todays, um, in which she's impressed, pressed paper, um, Kozo paper, I believe. Um, yes, Kozo paper onto objects in her uh, home during lockdown and then um, allowed them to dry in form and then inked them afterwards when they were hard um, so that's something to go and look at so that first of all 3d printer secondly casted or molded and then thirdly um, fabricating things from something that was essentially printed and 2d in the first instance and this i'm mind mapping on not mind mapping um Built scaffolding, scaffolding onto my existing uh, knowledge thus. Um, for the last 10 years, I've been making paper structures and cardboard structures that are either stage sets or costumes. Um, and the stage set bit of it is inspired by Hockney, and I'll just show you in a minute, um, who was, of course, in turn inspired by Cubism or has in Cube incorporated cubist thinking into his research and also um, by way of Emily Speed's committee um, de Chirico's costumes for ballet russe. Um, let's just go and look at those things for a moment. Here is a Hockney design for stage. This is Rake's Progress 1975 and you can see how it relates to cubism. Here is Ballet Russe. Hang on, there might be a better. Here we go. Ballet Russe, that's de Chirico's costumes for Diaghilev's Ballet Russe. And here, so endearing. Um, I find these really easy to empathise with. Are... Um, women's cos costumes for women made by Emily Speed called the committee and they go on a walk there we go off they are on their walk um I'll put all these references at the end of the talk thing film talk whatever you like um 
so that's what I'm scaffolding onto. And here's a pile of expanded print that I've got around the house. At this point, my thinking separated into uh, domestic scale objects and scaled for gallery or site specific. So we'll do them both. But here's some domestically scaled objects. We've got here um, a gorgeous book by Ben Jenner, recent graduate of um, master's graduate, I should say, of UWE. Um, in which he finds himself through acemic writing. Absolutely gorgeous book. I, I treasure this. Um, and I think you could include all artists' books in expanded print. Um, this one here, which is still 2D, but it's out and about. Um, it's made by um, Nick Hans and Ellen at uh, the Letterpress Collective, Bristol's Letterpress Collective, and it celebrates all the little libraries springing up on um, road junctions around Bristol. Uh, and they put these bookmarks into the little libraries and into the books. So the bookmarks get into people's homes. And I love that um, idea, that sentiment. So distribution is obviously an element here. The books, artist books can be distributed. Uh, the um, bookmark itself is all about distribution these are also about uh, taking things home these are two pillowcases printed by Jane Spencer um, during the blue coats bed in project during which it um, for to mark the 50 years after John and Yoko's peace protest where where they went to bed and stayed there um, for a whole month the blue coat had a bed in the foyer and you could bid to take it over for a day and the print studios at um, the Blue Coat took it for a day and we printed bed linen and people came in with their bed linen and um, we printed all over it and you can see here it's got the words to um, give peace a chance um, and remember love there we go um, gorgeous bed linen there another treasured object and here's another one this sorry about the camera work obviously I've only got two two hands I was going to say two pairs of hands how ridiculous this this is a series of grocery bags and they're printed with prayers and drawings and um, quotes uh, the drawings are of the herbs that were available in um, 2006 in Brixton Market. It's a project called Wildcraft and it was done by Anna Lucas, who is a filmmaker and a, an artist of all kinds, really. But she's here, she's drawn the herb. She's named the herb on the flip side. So they've got gorgeous names like, um, there's one called Alligator Pepper. Um, and uh, that, in fact, that's it. And this one here is, um, hang on a second, I'll find another one. Um, this is Bitter Melon, this one. Um, and they're printed in gold. So she put the bags back in the hands of the market traders in Brixton. And uh, they got distributed into people's homes by being filled with apples and, and the herbs that they were intended for in the first place. Um, so that's a, a nice thing. Um, so those are, those are domestic in scale. All those projects are producing um, uh, print, 3D printed matter that's domestic and goes back into the home. And, um, and most of it is for sale to the public. If you're grant funded, you can afford to make bigger stuff and scale it for the gallery or a gallery or a specific site. And I was thinking about this and looking through printmaking today and I came across Victoria Arns, um, which looks like this. And I was reading about her work and thought immediately of Fiona Kelly, who I will find on the computer. Fiona Kelly is a cork-based artist. Um, hang on a second, let's go find her. Here we go. Um, this, I suppose, was the first time I thought 
wow, expanded print, that's really a thing. Um, and it's land, you know, it's, it, it, it's something that I really need to consider in relation to my own practice. And it, it could be licensed to go large, go 3D, um, go very, very playful indeed, um, if I can figure out why and how. Uh, this piece was made for a project called Hexagon, and it's screen printed in bitumen onto ply. Um, Fiona Kelly, by the way, um, although cork based, was was grouped with Wicklow artists, County Wicklow artists for that project. Um, and so was Dominic Fee, who's another cork based artist. Um, and it's worth saying at this point that I googled Dominic and he's got fantastic writing on his site about expanded print. Uh, very, very easy to read. And he's currently got an exhibition with Deirdre Breen in Cork Printmakers. Um, and it's their inaugural uh, print exhibition in a series of expanded print themed uh, exhibitions. So they're doing a programme, in other words, which indicates that um, we should all be thinking about expanded print and what it means for us. Um, OK, going back to scaling up for gallery and specific, site specific work. Um, Priscilla Romero is next on my list. We've just talked about her because of the Richard Noyce article. But here's some work. And you can see here that she's printed actually with latex. She's cast um, these fingertips. Um, so identity is immediately what um, she's talking about. Um, and laid them out in a gallery space, a bit like tombstones, but they are, of course, finger sized. Um, and uh, so, so that relates back to the cast and moulded thing that I was talking about earlier. It also, for me, there's a picture of the artist. It also, for me, relates to Helen Chadwick. So we're back on the computer. Let's find Helen. Um, here we go. Now, Helen Chadwick was exhibiting work quite widely when I was at art school and I came across her work then, obviously, um, but didn't really get it. And now I do. Um, now I, I think she's very, very important. Um, this is a piece called The Piano. It was um, it's printed on to ply. It's piano sized and it's um, uh, part of a series of objects commemorating years within her childhood. And this is her age nine. Um, absolutely stunning piece, I think. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to um, talk about Libby Haig's work. So Libby Haig makes woodcuts. Um, these are all woodcuts here. And then she, think of paste ups and graffiti, she pastes them up onto the walls of her gallery spaces. So there will be a degree of planning to create the structure, but there's also a degree of improvisation. Um, and that for me relates quite closely to the work of Nancy Spiro, who was also exhibiting, here's, oh, my heavy book, sorry. Um, exhibiting widely when I was at art school. Um, this is her work pasted up onto a window in the Pompidou. Um, you can see she's thinking like a printmaker, motifs, themes, iterations. She's thinking in strips and she's uh, making things in strips and columns, so quite filmic, which you can relate to the expanded print practice of um, uh, over here. Kentridge, playful, fun, no rules, no holes barred. Um, so where does that leave us with uh, the possibility of a four day course in July? Hang on a minute while I get rid of this page and go on to the next page. So in July, I'm teaching this four day course. Um, if you Google um, on the UE site, in fact, go to the UE site and then search for CPD and the words, um, what, continuing professional development. 
and the words expanded print and you'll come up with this course. And what I'd like to do is to gather a, together a, a small group of artists to research the term expanded print and play from the perspective of their own practices. Although we'll start with responses to the space and it's a gorgeous space. It's the screen print room at Bower Ashton. Um, and then we'll move on to experimenting with um, expanded print from the perspective of being in one's own practice. Um, please come and join me then and um, let's see how I've managed to advance my thinking. Um, looking forward to it. Bye for now.